So here I've got just a sampling from the model kit that I have. I've got a methane with a carbon with four hydrogens attached. And then I've got a nitrogen, which has a lone pair, but then has three bonding sites. Then I've got a halogen, let's call it chlorine, with three lone pairs, one bonding site. And then an oxygen with two lone pairs and two bonding sites. So when we're doing units of unsaturation, the, the, the basic general kind of guideline for that that we're looking at is, is that our normal formula for an alkane is, is whatever the number of carbons is, there should be double that plus two more for a saturated compound. Okay? And for units of unsaturation, then we're looking at how many double, triple bonds and rings. So a double bond is one unit of unsaturation. A triple bond would be two units, and any time you have a closed ring, no matter how many pieces are in there, as long as it goes in a loop, that would be one unit of unsaturation. Okay. Well, what we want to do is we want to be able to figure out from the formula what what we have there. So, so things that are like nitrogen, like arsenic or phosphorus or sulfur for oxygen or bromine or fluorine or iodine for that, will all influence that. And so we want to kind of go through and explain how they affect this. Now, every time you remove two hydrogens, you create a unit of unsaturation. So if I have C4H8, then there would be one unit of unsaturation. So either I have cyclobutane or I have uh, butene, but1ene or but2ene. There's one unit of unsaturation of the, on that. If I take away two hydrogens, now I have two units. Now I could have butyne, I could have a butdiene, or I could have a cyclic ring uh, with an alkene in it, so, so cyclobutene uh, would be an example of that. So, so the number of hydrogens I have is critical, but what we're going to look at today is well, what if you have something besides hydrogen? How does that affect things? Okay. So if I have a halogen like chlorine, bromine, or iodine, or fluorine, or if I have oxygen or sulfur, if I have nitrogen, what does that do? And the key to understanding that is, is how does that affect my hydrogens? So what we want to think of for the halogens is that replaces a hydrogen. We'll show why in a second. And so we count those as hydrogens. So if I said C3H7Cl, I would count that as C3H8 when I'm doing my units of unsaturation. That'd be saturated. Okay. The oxygen you ignore. We'll show why in a second. And then the nitrogen, you're subtracting a hydrogen. You need a new hydrogen to take care of that nitrogen. Now let's look at why a little bit. When you're going ahead and connecting these, I'm going to go ahead and unfreeze this here. So this is going to shift around a little bit. But when I, when I take this molecule here and I break off a hydrogen, okay, I create a site for a new bond. So if I take a halogen, the bonding on that is the same as in a hydrogen. I have a single bond to make, just like this. So if I plug in that halogen here, then it's essentially taking the place of a hydrogen. And so, and so I count a halogen like I would a hydrogen. That's essentially taking the bonding structure of that hydrogen's place, and so it counts the same as one or the other. Whereas, if I take the halogen back out and I plug in an oxygen, here I'm looking at two bonds. And so now, I'm going to go through, and when I plug that in, I still have the capacity to bond that hydrogen that I've removed. And so, plugging an oxygen in does not affect my units of unsaturation. It kind of just creates a bridge in between what I originally had. And so you can see that this is still C4H, or CH4, but now it has an oxygen attached. Whereas when I put a nitrogen in, the nitrogen has three bonding sites. So one of those is used to attach to the molecule, and then one of them can continue on to the original hydrogen was there, but that still leaves one more bonding site. And so now I need to add a hydrogen in order to saturate that nitrogen to the point where it's satisfied the octet rule or it's satisfied the typical way that it'll bond. And so now I'm taking away a hydrogen that I had previously counted towards my formula, to, to satisfy the nitrogen there. Okay. Now, that's what that looks like with those. If you think about that then, in, in regards to the rest of these then, essentially what we're saying is, here's your compound, 
here's the hydrogen that was attached. Now you need to put another hydrogen in. So for that, you're going to take away a hydrogen that you had counted towards this for that. Whereas here, you can plug in your compound, and then you can plug in the hydrogen that you had had before. Nothing has changed. And in here, you can't plug in your hydrogen. The chlorine has taken its place. So when we're doing analysis of that, these replace the hydrogen, these we ignore, and these we need to take away a hydrogen from. So if I give you a formula and I say, okay, we have C10, H12, and 2, O3, and let's make sure we don't do anything silly weird here, CLBR. Okay. And I say, well, what's the units of unsaturation on this? What I would like to do is I would like to compile this into what would this be with just hydrogens. So the two nitrogens, I'm going to take those away and I'm going to take away two hydrogens with it to make it C10H10. The oxygens I just ignore. I don't have to do anything for that. And then the Cl and the Br count as hydrogen. So simplifying this down, I would think of this as C10H12. Then I would go through and say, okay, C10 should be H22. If it were saturated, that's what that would be. I'm off by 10 hydrogens, and every 2 is a unit of unsaturation. So this would have 5 units of unsaturation. Okay, And so some combination of these that totals up to 5. Now at that point, when you get above 4, or F4, you probably are looking at some type of aromatic ring, like a benzene or phenyl. Uh, and maybe there's a nitrogen in there or something else. In the case of five units of unsaturation, it's very difficult to do that without a benzene ring. So that's likely what you're seeing at that point. Okay? So that's how you go through and do your units of unsaturation.